Right, well I am uh, getting on with the uh, bracket and that, but uh, I just uploaded the other video that I did. If you watched the other first one of me putting this on there, you'll know that I was testing the um, speeds this, which was a bit stupid the way I did it. So what I thought I'd do now is put the magnet on, or I've put a magnet on the uh, motor spindle, and I want to test it in the preset speeds to see what speeds it comes up with. So I've got it in the uh, 750 <clears throat> without catching myself in anything I'm going to try and see what comes up with that if I can get this right and if this magnet will work it yeah there you go so that's coming up at 758 in the uh, speed the reason I think this comes up at 1700 if you put it on the full weight is this is probably configured this VFD for 60 Hertz because the, the, the actual motor speed rating is 1425 1450 I think 14 yeah 1425 so at 60 Hertz that normally puts them up to about a 1750 something like that so these uh, so I mean this this um, I mean they're only cheap old Chinese tack them as these which I'm now going to be sorting out the bracket and whatever and that'll be in another, other bits of this video I presume but yeah this, these ain't that bad they're quite accurate I mean I don't know how accurate the motor is I mean that's saying it's doing for 757 if that motor is 750 and that's showing 757 that's pretty accurate certainly accurate enough for me right I'm going to get on with um, finishing the bracket and whatever so I need to mount this sensor it's still in the bracket that it was in on my other lathe on my wood lathe so I've got to mount it in behind here so I'm going to glue the magnet that makes it work onto the flat bit on the pulley wheel there so I need to get it in there sort of pointing straight at it don't know how well you can see that from there let's see if I can get a better view of that right, that might be a better view so I've got to get that pointing back that way with a magnet on there so I've got to make a bracket that's going to bring that from the motor mounting back plate and hold it pretty much in place there. Um, what's that, what that's going to involve is making like a, a double angled bracket. Right, let's uh, get this back on the tripod. I've got a plan. Right, so I've got no chance of doing this one-handed, so <coughs> I've got the camera back on the tripod. What I'm going to do is try and get this bit of cardboard in here and bend it, fold it, to the sort of shape I want. I want that to come around that side. Wants to be like that. Wants to be that. So that, and that sort of looks like the shape I want. Don't know how well that's showing up on there. Well, I'll cut a thin bit of metal for this this side. All right, so this is the bracket I've ended up with. That hole was already in it. I didn't put that in there. I've just <clears throat> a bit of cardboard worked to a point. I did have to tweak it a bit. It weren't perfect. But unless you're, I mean, you're not going to get anything out of that. You're not going to know exactly how to bend it. That's saying if you're putting it on an ML7, you can do something similar, but you'll have to do it trial and error like I did. What you'll probably be more interested in is 
Uh, you actually wire one of these VFD, VFDs, excuse me, one of these digital tachometers up. Because <clears throat> if you buy one of these, or if you've bought one, you probably know, you get absolutely sod all the instructions with them. And I bought these two of these because I put one on my mill and this was on my wood lathe. And I can't remember exactly how I found out in the end how to wire them up. So what I think I'll do as I've got a I'm just gonna drill and tap an hole in the back of the motor mounting plate and screw that on in the right position to get it where things and before I went down last night I glued the magnet on the pulley wheel. Now what I'll do now is I'll go over to the whiteboard and show you what you have to do to wire one of these up. Because like I say if you do buy one they don't come with any instructions and it is a pain. It's a pain not knowing how to wire them up. So I'll see you over at the whiteboard. Right so this is what you need to know about these Chinese digital tachometers, rev counter, whatever you want to call it. I would have loved to have had this in front of me when I got my first two. But I just want to make it very clear. Then, right, so this is my one that's all wired up from the other lathe. The cable clips into the back and it will only go one way, so you can't really go wrong with that. When they're new, they have got a back plate on them. My back plate is on the wall where I had this stuck on the wall, but so the cable will only go in one way. And when you have another look at that ball behind us, <clears throat> if you're facing it, so you're facing the readout, the ribbon cable coming down, they're numbered. <clears throat> There's five cables in this, then I've numbered them one to five from left to right, facing the readout. Number two is just bare, it's not used for anything. And Ignore the markings on the cable because it, it doesn't mean a thing. I've had a couple of different ones The cables they just use any old cable they can so Don't think because there's an X or a, a little line that looks like a negative on the cable that is cable is the right thing Just ignore all that So with the sensor On the end of the sensor you've got I don't really want to take this apart at the moment at the end of the sensor you've got three cables a brown, a blue and a black I've got a switch in my one just so I can switch it on and off from the power source incidentally the power that I use is a it come off of a tool I used to have it's actually a 6 volt <coughs> adapter I mean the Americans call these a wall walk but I mean this says it's 6 volt actually knocks out 10 volts so I think these will work from anything from I don't know 3 or 4 volts to 30 volts or something I don't know you'd have to check that out for yourself you might blow it up and put 30 volts for it but they definitely work on sort of 10 and 12 volts and less you can work them off a 9 volt battery I know that so looking at the board number one the one on the left goes to the black on the sensor. Number two isn't used. Number three goes to the blue on the sensor. Number four goes to the negative of your power supply. And number five goes to the brown on the sensor and the positive of the power supply. I'm not sure if they are polarity sensitive. I suspect they are. But it definitely works this way around. The other thing to note is it does make a difference which way the magnet goes. So if when you do get it wired up you put your magnet on your spindle whatever you're testing for speed and nothing at all happens you just get the uh, readout lights up and when it's spinning nothing happens take the magnet off and turn it round because the whole effect I believe is polarity that is polarity sensitive 
and so it will only work with one way the magnet is stuck on it it won't break the field in the sensor if it's the wrong way around so anyway that's that and if you have got one of these and you've been trawling the internet trying to find out how to wire it up that should help you I'd have liked it right I'm going to go back over to the lathe screw my thing on and hopefully show you it working Right, just in the interest of anyone who might be interested, that's the bracket with the uh, sensor on it. I'll take a side view of it. And there's the magnet on, glued onto the uh, pulley wheels. I've um, locked that on there. I hope it stays on there. Don't want that flying off, it'll have your eye out. But I'll have the guard on it anyway, so it'll be alright. Um, and then the cable, which you can hardly see, but is rooted down, goes into that. <clears throat> There's a cavity in the casting that goes right through the through the lathe and comes out of the bottom down here. I'm through the bottom down there and there's the uh, ribbon cable that goes into the back of the thing. I'll do a little bit more and then show you it again. Alright so here we are, everything's all wired up and done properly now. And for the first time in a very long time all the guards are on me live. Don't look quite right. It's been all them guards have been off so long. Um, I've got the belt <clears throat> on the fastest pulley. Before I give that a go to start with. But it's so quiet. But with this speed control straight up on what is a number 900 there and on the variable speed that gives me about 300 the slowest speed I used to have was 276 you've effectively got four preset speeds here because you leave that where it is you've got three 320 there put it on that one it goes up to 620 <clears throat> One's eight something I think. Yep, next one's eight thirty. And then full blown with nine eighty two, which is as fast as I'll probably ever want this lathe to go. I ain't particularly after speed. It's handy when you come to polishing or anything, but but nine eight is like I say I would only ever use that for polishing. A lot easier than changing the belt, isn't it? I'm well happy with it. Might take a bit of getting used to using these controls because my duo switch was about here and I got very used to using that, especially when I was sort of threading and things. But there you go. That's him. I hope you found this useful, particularly the um, wiring of these up. Because I know that can be a right nuisance when you don't know how to do it, as I didn't when I first got them. Well, thanks for watching and all that. Subscribe, leave me some comments. And if you know anything I don't, let me know. See you again. Bye.